Hey there, MJ traders and investors. It's Rod with Pow Group. Welcome back on the Pursuit of Wealth, your home for MJ stocks, crypto assets, news, and interviews. Also home to the best MJ community. Today is Wednesday, November 29th. Happy Hump Day. I hope you're doing well. In this video, we're going to be going over an interesting article with regards to the federal government in the U.S. withholding key rescheduling letter despite multiple FOIA requests, so Freedom of Information Act requests and lawsuit. Like I said, this is a very interesting article. I want to break it all down, give my thoughts and opinions on it, and also curious to hear what the community has to say about this as well. Before we get to all that and more, though, make sure to smash the like. It helps support me in the channel. It doesn't cost you anything. If you're new, you can subscribe. Tick the bell. All that good stuff. You'll be notified on any future videos or when I go live. Also, please remember that this is not financial advice. This is for entertainment and informational purposes only. You should never, ever buy anything based on anything that I write or anything that I say. Also, make sure to give us a follow on X, which is formerly Twitter. The handle for that is at GroupPow. Going to be using that as my platform of choice going forward. And I just recently did a live stream. I went live on, what was it, a couple days ago. That today marked 90 days. So that was on Monday, on the 27th, from when HHS's letter and recommendation to Schedule 3 first came out. And then there was a lot of speculation that they, the DEA had 90 days by law, but it has now been... 92 days and we still haven't seen it so we know that that to be false right and in that video i give my thoughts and opinions on that so if you haven't seen that you can check that out but here is the article from mj business times the federal and it reads federal government continues to withhold key mj rescheduling recommendation letter despite FOIA requests, so Freedom of Information Act requests and lawsuit. After nearly three months of multiple Freedom of Information Act requests, the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services still has not publicly confirmed that it recommended MJ be reclassified as Schedule Three controlled substance. One attorney who filed a lawsuit to obtain the letter calls the situation asinine and profoundly disappointing. And also, if you're not familiar with Empower Oversight, they are a watchdog organization, so whistleblowers and research. I've been following empower oversight for multiple years now and they're very uh, applicable to the crypto space as well there's been multiple shady things going on with regards to crypto and this can apply to anything so they can get information through FOIA requests like I said Freedom of Information Act requests so if you ever have anything that you can send to them you can also donate to them that helps support you know any kind of uh nefarious activity going on or any kind of corruption or anything like that right or any kind of political agenda as we know uh, might even get shadow banned for doing this video but as we know uh, the u.s government has been time and time again hiding things and in light of certain lawsuits and things like that going on in crypto it's very evident and empower oversight has played a big role in really kind of exposing that truth so any kind of similar situations with regards to MJ, I think we can follow a similar path, right? So just reach out to your elected officials as well. Let them know you're not happy. Let them know that we want this information public. They work for the people, not the other way around, right? They're, it's the tax dollars that pay for these salaries and uh, you know the, these people in office, right? So make sure to, if anybody does have any information, you can also share it with Empower Oversight. But we'll go through the details here. After nearly, nearly three months, multiple public record requests and a lawsuit, the U.S. federal government has still not released an unredacted version of the widely reported letter detailing the U.S. Health and Human Services recommendation to reschedule MJ. And I remember uh, uh, it was John Deaton in, in crypto, and I know it's not this is an MJ video, but uh, they had requested, I forget exactly what it was, but they had requested through a FOIA request um, to get some sort of document and literally like 99% of the document was redacted. <laughs> it, it was just, it, this is your transparent, you know, SEC, your security and exchange commission, right? Where they, we got a FOIA request. They got whatever document it was that they were looking at. Literally like 99% of it was redacted. So they're like, okay, yeah, we'll give it to you. No problem. And I think that had to do with Empower Oversight as well. And then whenever they gave them the, the document, it was like 99% redacted. Like, come on, we need transparency, especially for a U.S. government agency or the U.S. government, which is, you know, funded by our tax dollars. They work for the people, right? So uh, not the other way around. That is very key. So HHS confirmed in an email August 30th to MJ Business Times that it expeditiously responded to President Joe Biden's directive of HHS Secretary Xavier Becerra and provided its scheduling recommendation for MJ to the DEA, Drug Enforcement Administration, on August 29th, 2023, which 90 days from there was November 27th on Monday this week. So we'll go through this here. But after email correspondence between CBT 
HHS and DEA, as well as Freedom of Information Act FOIA requests to both HHS and the DEA from CBT and others, neither agency confirmed if HHS recommended reclassifying MJ from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 substance in the Controlled Substances Act, as Bloomberg first reported after seeing but not obtaining the letter. No other media outlets have reported seeing nor obtaining a copy of the HHS letter to the DEA. This news, first reported by Bloomberg, has wide-ranging implications for the MJ industry, including a shift in federal policy that would recognize MJ as having medical value should the DEA take up the HHS on its recommendation, CBT reported. Should MJ be reclassified as Schedule 3, it would break ties with high-abuse substances like heroin, LSD, methaquolone, and ecstasy, and instead would join the likes of ketamine and you know Tylenol products, aciminophen. So containing codeine. But the DEA has final authority over rescheduling drugs. In response to CBT's FOIA request on October 27th, the agency sent a heavily redacted version of one-page letter from Rachel Levine, Assistant Secretary of Health, to DEA Administer Administrator Ann Milgram, still with no details on what the HHS recommendation was, right? So you can see, um, you know, it, it's a common trend, right? They just redact everything. And then Matthew Zorn, partner at Yetter Zorn, who has filed a lawsuit against HHS to obtain the letter calls this situation profoundly disappointing. And, you know, that this I've been disappointed by multiple, you know, documents and that we've been, you know, exposed through FOIA requests, uh, not just in the MJ industry, like I said, in, in cryptos. So this is a common theme where, again, uh, you know, the, the transparency has to be, you know, the top of the, the main concern, right? And that's just not what we're seeing from organizations that work for the people. Like, this is absolutely... This is absolutely disappointing and asinine. Of all the lawsuits I've ever filed, this involves the most asinine conduct, Zorn told CBT, so MJ Business Times. They should just post the document, moot the case, and we should all move on. They should be ashamed of themselves, but they don't. there's no repercussions, right? And they have no shame. And in some cases, I don't even know if they have a conscience. There is no real reason for them to withhold this document. Zorn filed the lawsuit September 29th in the U.S. District Court of District of Columbia after HHS failed to produce the letter in response to Zorn's FOIA request filed August 30th, has not made a timely determination within 20 days regarding the request, and has not made a timely determination on expedited treatment requested by Zorn in his FOIA request, according to the suit, as detailed in previous reporting from CPT. On November 14th, Zorn filed a motion for summary judgment, which if the court decides the HHS exemption claims to the FOIA request applies, it will have to explain why it applies. I just want the document to be posted, Zorn said. That's it. I do not care about making any broader point of law. I just want the document, which is 100% understandable. The default deadline for its response is November 24th, but an assistant U.S. attorney with the Department of Justice, DOJ, requested extension an extension to December 12th. So we should see some movement on this, like I said, within the next month or so. And that's kind of what I've been saying as well. I, I expect rescheduling to Schedule 3 be the most likely scenario. I think there's a slight chance it could, we could get a response from the DEA before the end of the year, but I think it's mostly going to most likely going to come in Q1 or Q2 of 2024 is the most likely scenario. But that's just my opinion. Let me know in the comments what you believe. What's unique about this case, not only are there a lot of folks in the media talking about it and the recommendation, but literally, lawmakers are writing letters like Senator Kristen, Kristen Gillibrand, and nobody's ever seen the letter. Zorn said about a letter Gillibrand wrote to the DEA urging the agency to move MJ to Schedule 3. What's even more inexplicable is assuming they do go forward with rescheduling, they're going to have to release the document anyway. So really, this isn't about them protecting a process at all. It's just about them playing politics. Hmm, no way. The U.S. government and governments around the world, no way they would put sound policy... <laughs> or politics ahead of sound policy. Hmm, that has never happened before in the history of time, <laughs> right? It's just, it absolutely is asinine, and it's almost laughable, really, and just sad and shameful to the highest level. In HHS's response to CBT's FOIA request, it claimed it redacted contents of the letter under FOIA exemption B5, which focuses on intra-agency communications. Okay. Read the March 2022 memorandum, that he wrote and ask yourself if there's anything in that memorandum that is consistent with them withholding this document, which is clearly of massive public importance, Zorn said. The guidance notes that information that might technically fall within an exemption should not be withheld from a FOIA requester unless the agency can identify a foreseeable harm or legal bar to disclosure. In the case of doubt, openness should prevail. 
exactly. Yeah, transparency. Not that hard to, to practice, right? Later, the memo emphasizes that transparency in government operations is a priority of this administration and this department. Agreed. Unlike other FOIA requests that can be complicated and involve several emails and records, Zorn said this involves just one piece of paper. This is a simple lawsuit. We know exactly what document we're talking about, he said. Very, verifying this recommendation has profound implications on state legal MJ operators, Zorn said. Moving from Schedule 1 to Schedule 3 substance would mean IRC Section 280E tax code, which prohibits licensed operators from tax, uh, taking tax deductions afforded to most other businesses, would no longer apply, which would remove a significant barrier to profitability. But it goes beyond that. The industry functions in this really short of odd manner because capital isn't liquid. There's just so much you can't do when you don't have money. You can't pay your employees good benefits, Soren said. There's actually an equity component to it. And if your business can't turn a profit, you can't do any other equity initiatives that folks want to do. And as we know, I did a video on Cureleaf, Boris Jordan, the executive uh, chairman and co-founder, said that if it wasn't for 280E tax code, that they would most likely already be paying a dividend to investors. Let that sink in for a moment. Already be paying a dividend if not for 280E. They've already paid over $350 million to the US government just under 280E, not, not talking about other taxation components, just 280E tax code alone. So imagine if that 350 million plus dollars hit their bottom line, it's no wonder they are confident they would be paying a dividend. So just imagine, the amount of cash flowing businesses we're going to have in the MJ industry when 280E goes away. And then once we see, you know, different export, import, right, when Canada can, uh, companies in Canada can sell in the US and vice versa, it's going to be massive. And then Germany coming online, I just did a video on that as well. Um, agreement confirmed, vote expected next week. It's pretty much a, a done deal. And then I just did a short video as well on who benefits the most from legalization in Germany. So you can check out those if you'd like to read more on that. But like I said, huge, huge implications, absolutely. And if 280E is removed, oh boy, we're going to see massive, massive profitability and euphoria in this in this market. And then safer banking as well. If we get, you know, if we can buy with credit cards and things like that, if you go to an MJ shop, you can use a credit card, join the 21st century. And uh, yeah, you know, up listening to the NICE and the NASDAQ and traditional funding methods, uh, this industry is going to go absolutely bananas. But in conclusion here, the industry functions in this really short of odd manner. Oh yeah, I already read that. You can't operate at a loss forever. So you can't talk about reform. You can't talk about improvement. If you can't keep the lights on, you can't get the black. If you can't get to the black, none of it matters, right? So I would agree. And uh, kudos to uh, CBT for this information and, and taking this initiative. And uh, yeah, definitely shout out to this Zorn gentleman for spearheading this because yeah it, it is asinine it is profoundly disappointing it's absolutely shameful that this is an agency or a government and multiple agencies that work for the people that are funded by our you know the people's tax dollars i'm in canada but you know I, we see this all the time here and around the world that you know governments start to to lose sight that you know they work for the people not the other way around right and it comes down to greed and control and power but uh, at the end of the day if people are not uh, if these leaders are not leading the way that they should be we just have to vote them out i'm not on either side of the aisle all i want is what's best for this amazing industry and this medicine of the future so going down it there let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section below going in it there though it's rod with power group thanks again for joining us on the pursuit of wealth and we'll see you again on the next video